welcome back to my channel. Today, we will discuss format of laboratory report writing on experiment 5 simple harmonic motion. So, first one, if you write the title, you will get one mark. And then, you must also write the objective or the learning outcome. So, there are two learning outcomes. The first one is to determine the accelerations due to the gravity using a simple pendulum. And the second one is investigate the effect of the large amplitude oscillations to the accuracy of the G obtained from the experiment. Okay, so if you write this one, you also get one mark. Okay, next we go to observation. For data devolution, here we have uh, six reading from 40 cm until 90 cm. So we have two parts. Part A is the angle less than 10 degree and part B is the angle equals to 70 degree. So let us look at part A, the angle less than 10 degree. For length L, you must write the uncertainty where the uncertainty is equal to plus minus 0 0.1 cm. So if you write this one correctly with the correct unit cm, so you will get one mark. Okay, so 40 cm, you must write 40.0, 50.0, 60.0 0 because here we can read one decimal place. So all the reading here, you must have one decimal place. Okay. After that, the time taken. So the time taken for the angle less than 10 degree is we must take the time taken for 10 oscillations. And the uncertainty here, it actually depends on your stopwatch okay, or the timer. So usually it's plus minus 0 0.01, two decimal places. And you must write also second. So if you write correctly, the uncertainty with the correct unit, you will get one mark. After that, we must take three reading. So for example, let's say T1, T2 and T3 is 13.39, 13.47 and 13.34. Then after that, we take the average. And if you observe here, here because our uncertainty is only two decimal places, okay, we follow back. So therefore, the value that we get here also two decimal places, two decimal places, two decimal places and also the T average also two decimal places okay so meaning that for time taken we must have two decimal places consistently because the average is the time taken for 10 oscillations so therefore we must divide by 10 okay so 13.40 divided by 10 we will get 1.34 if 14.89 we will get 1.49 okay and also we want to plot t square against l so therefore we need to find t square okay and unit is s square okay so length and time here is the is the primary data so the primary data we must follow back the uncertainty okay so for example here one decimal place so the reading here also one decimal place okay if here time taken uh, for 10 oscillation is two decimal place so the value here also we must follow back the uncertainty okay the period T and also T square here is a secondary data. Okay, so for secondary data, usually we must have two or three decimal places. Okay, so if you write two, you must consistently write two. If you want to write three, you must consistently write three decimal places. Okay, so this one, if let's say all correct, you will get one mark and also one mark. Okay, next part B angle with 70 degree. Okay, here. We only do experiment for 100 cm, so the length plus minus 0 0.1 cm, okay? And then our 100 cm, we must write as 100.0. Okay, time taken for 70 degree is we only do uh, 5 oscillations, okay? So we also take 3 reading, T1, T2 and T3. After that, we take T average. For the period here, we must take T average divided by 5 because we only oscillate for five oscillations only okay so next one is um for part a okay so for part a we need to plot a graph and we want to plot graph t square okay against bank l okay so meaning that our l is x exit and also t square is y exit okay so x exit is actually the length y exit is the value t squared so for centroid we will take the average for the length and also average for t squared okay so we copy down all the data here 40.0 50.0 okay so our answer is 60.0 we also follow back one decimal place and for t square here we have two decimal places so here 2.75 also two decimal places and remember to write the unit so for length is in cm for t square is 
in second square okay so all correctly you can get another one mark okay next one we will go to a plotting graph so for plotting graph the first one we must write the title graph t square against l you will get one mark and then you must label the y exit t square and uh, the unit is x square for x exit is the length and the unit is in cm okay after that you must uh plot the centroid where centroid you must circle okay so you must circle this one is a centroid so centroid you must circle up okay and then you must plot the six reading so the first reading second reading third reading fourth reading fifth reading and the sixth reading okay so if you plot all correctly you will get another two marks okay after that is our best fit line Okay, so best fit line here, you must pass through centroid and also as many points as possible. So for best fit line, you will also get one mark. Okay, so best fit line, you will get another one mark. Okay, next one is the, the triangle of the gradient. Where the triangle of the gradient usually for y exit, you must have 8cm. For x exit also, you must have 8cm. Okay, so if all correctly, you will also get one mark. Okay, another one is the skills that you use. Huh? The skills that we use. Okay, so here, here is 10 cm, 20 cm, and here is 0 0.4, 0 0.3. So remember, you don't use uh, odd numbers. Okay, for example, 3, 6, 9. Okay, this one, the skill you cannot use. Okay, so if the skills that you use correctly, you also will get one mark. And also, you must uh, make sure that the size of the plotting graph you must have 60% of the graph paper okay so you must make sure you draw your graph more than 60% okay so then you will get another one mark okay after that we look at the skills that we used okay to find out the uncertainty okay so for y exit the skills here is 0 0.4 so 0 0.4 you divided by 10 small scale okay 0 0.4 so we want to find the uncertainty meaning that is half of the smaller scale okay so half of the smaller scale our small scale is 10 and then half of the smaller scale become 20 so we straight away we divide by 20 so 0 0.4 over 20 you will get 0 0.02 meaning that we have two decimal places okay for x exit the scales that we use is 10 so 10 over 20 10 over 20, you will get 0 0.5. So later, when you want to substitute, we only allow one decimal place. Okay, so remember, x is one decimal place, y is two decimal places. Okay, next we go find the gradient. Okay, gradient, you must write y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, where y component is 3.52 minus 0 0.64. Okay, so here, 2 decimal place minus 2 decimal place because we know that y component is 2 decimal places and then for s component only 1 decimal place 80.5 minus 10.0 okay so 1 decimal place minus 1 decimal place okay after that we must write the value okay so the value that we write we must base on the significant figure so 3.52 here is 3 significant figure 0 0.64 is 2 significant figure 80.85.0 is 3 significant figure and 10.0 is 3 significant figure okay so the smallest significant figure is actually 2 okay so what should we do is we can write 2 or you can 2 plus 1 okay so if our answer is 0 0.0384 we can write it as 0 0.0384 or we can uh, change it become cm become meter okay so after that we change from cm to meter we will get 3.84 second square per meter okay so here is one two three three significant figure because we can either two or three okay if you don't want you can write 3.8 also can so it's up to you okay okay after that we find the gradient step c is we must compare the equations with the gradient so as we know that equation t square equals to 4 pi square l over g ok 
okay where t square and l is x and also is y if you compare y equals to mx plus c we know that y is t square x is l then our gradient is equals to m equals to 4 pi square over g okay so we take g as a subject 4 pi square equals to m so we substitute with the gradient so we substitute the gradient 3.84 finally we will get the rational acceleration equals to 10.3 meter per second square okay so if you substitute all correctly you will get one mark and the answer with the correct unit you also get one mark okay step four is to find the percentage between the experimental value and also theoretical value experimental value actually is from step c theoretical value we know that G is equal to 9.81 so we compare your result with the theoretical value theoretical value minus experimental value over theoretical value okay so usually the difference we will take only the differences so that's why we modulus times 100% so therefore we will get 4.99% so for part A we only have four steps we don't need to find the uncertainty of the gradient and also we don't need to find uncertainty of G Okay, so we only have four steps. Okay, part B. Part B is the angle where it's equal to 70 degree. Okay, so for part B, we only uh, do one reading. Okay, where we only take L equals to 100 cm. Okay, so we for part B, we will use equations. Okay, we will use equations to determine, to find out the value of G. So T equals to 2 pi, third L over G or t square equals to 4 pi square l over g so we substitute all the value 4 pi square l is here is 100 cm so 100 cm is actually 1 meter over t square okay so from the reading here of t square we go back to find the t okay so from here t the period is 2.21 okay so we substitute into the equations t equals to 2.21 and remember to square okay remember there's a square so finally rational accelerations for part b is equal to 8.08 .08 meter per second square then we also need to find we compare the percentage of difference between the experimental and also theoretical value okay so finally we will get 17.64 percent okay so for part b we only have two steps where the first step is we substitute all the value inside to find the G and step 2 is to find the percentage of difference between experimental value and theoretical value. Okay, after that, for discussion part, so as usual, for discussion part, we have three parts, part A, B and also C. Part A is we need to report out all our results. So for part A, so the first one, theta less than 10 degree the value that we get is 10.3 meter per second square and the percentage of difference is 4.99 percent part b is the theta equals to 70 degree where the value that we get is 8.08 .08 meter per second square and the percentage of difference is 17.64 so you just report out what is the your finding and also b you must write at least two okay at least two errors or mistake after that part c is that you must write out the precaution step always to overcome okay after that conclusion okay so for conclusion you just report out all the finding based on the result that you get okay so the experimental value due to the gravity for the first one is 10.3 meter per second square and the percentage of difference is 4.99 okay for part b is G that you get is 8.08 .08 and the percentage of difference is 17.64 okay so it shows that the large amplitude okay large amplitude meaning that it's a 70 degree oscillation will cause the value of acceleration due to the gravity obtained from the experiment to be inaccurate okay so if you compare if you use theta less than 10 degree you will get percentage of difference is only almost 5% but if you use theta equals to 70 degree the percentage of difference is 17.64 okay meaning that the differences is quite a lot okay so thank you for today hope you enjoy my video bye